to hang or to fold. It is something that the internet has been squabbling over for the past, well, since the internet's existed. And what it comes down to is this, your storage space. If you have a lot of hanging space, you gotta know how to hang. If you've got a lot of drawer space, you have to figure out how to fold. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through some extremely efficient hanging and folding techniques for all sorts of different garments. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel, give this video a thumbs up if you would like to see our new basement. The trouble with jeans and hanging them is that they're heavy. And if you don't hang them in an efficient way, they're just gonna flop around, lean to one side of your hanger, or fall off. And if you fold them and stack them, it's actually hard to know all of the jeans that you have available to you. So finding an efficient way to hang them that also makes them obvious in your closet is important. There are a few ways I'm gonna show you the first way, which is quite simple. What you wanna do is fold your jeans in half, uh, waist forward, and then you're gonna have these two belt loops meet up. You're gonna take your hanger and hook it through the belt loops. So now your jeans are gonna hang like this, and your hanger is going to be dangling your jeans like that. Then you're gonna hang your jeans up in on themselves like so, and you're just gonna flip the legs together inside. So you've created this little simple roll, and what that does is it shows you the backside of the jean and it keeps them stable and in place, and they don't really slide around. Here's another take on that method. So you're gonna take your jeans, fold them in half by the belt loops. You're gonna take your hanger and put it about a third of the way up. Then you're kinda of gonna accordion or collapse the jeans, put the hanger hook through, and you've got a nice neat hang. So in this case, the third is flipped out. In the first case, the third is flipped in. Whatever floats your boat. Next, a bit of a weird way, but it does work for some funny reason. I recommend starting with your jeans buttoned up. Then take your hanger and there's no nice way to say this. Just stick it in the crotch. Once your jeans are seated halfway on the hanger, you're gonna take one leg and flop it over the hanger that way and then you're just gonna take the opposing leg and flop it over the hanger that way. It looks pretty neat. And when you hang it up, they all kind of hang in your closet looking like a shirt. And again, you get the front of the jean facing you so you always know what pants you have available. There are two options in the pants slash bottom hanging world and either works nicely. I tend to prefer the clippy style for skirts uh, and the clamp style for pants. Now, sometimes you might get pants that have lingerie straps on them like these ones do, meaning you could just use a regular hanger for those, but really a nice way to hang your pants is to use one of these two. Now, if you're using the clippy style hanger for uh, pants, no problem, but you might wanna be mindful that these clips can actually leave indentations in your pants. If you want to avoid those indentations, you can fold a thick piece of cardboard, like a cue card or literally something from a shipping box, and just put that right over the area of the waistband where your clip is going to go, and that way the cardboard or the paper will protect your pant top from getting that crimping in it. Now, if you want to use the clamp style pant hanger, you might want to consider hanging them from the cuff instead of hanging them from the top. And that's because the clamp is not as strong as the clip and the pants might slip. Another thing you can do if you have a half closet like I do, where you've got two, two rows, if you will, is you can fold your pants in half and then you can use the clamp to hang them that way. There are lots of different ways that you can use the clip and the clamp. Figure it out, have fun. Long items like dresses and jumpsuits can actually be pretty cumbersome and take up a lot of space in your closet. And if you have a closet like mine where you've got two levels, you've got to figure out an alternative. So what I recommend is to get yourself a regular hanger and just hang the item as you normally would, but then get yourself one of these clippy hangers. That is the official name of them, by the way, a clippy hanger. And what you're gonna do is lay your garment down, hang the hanger where you normally would, and then you're gonna take the clippy hanger and 
put it at the bottom of whatever the garment is. Then you can simply fold the two hangers to meet up. You can take the hook of the clippy hanger and put it on the bar of the regular hanger and voila, your problem is solved. There are different theories on what makes sense for folding pants. If you follow the Marie Kondo school of folding, you like the idea of filing your stuff so you can visualize or see exactly what is in your drawers, especially if you're someone that likes to use drawer inserts or drawer dividers, or you might like to be the stacking type. Either way, there are a lot of different ways that you can fold pants, whether it's jeans or sweatpants or any other kind of pants that you're wearing. They're just some simple techniques. So I'm gonna show you what they are and you decide. You're going to fold them about halfway up. Then you can fold the legs up once more. Then you just flip the halves together, kind of closing it up like a book and you get a nice even stack. Here's another way you can try. With the button facing up, fold your jeans in half. Then tuck the crotch point in. This creates a nice even straight line so that when you fold your jeans up you don't have any weird stuff sticking out. Fold the leg just about halfway up and then do a roll fold about three times. That way you can stand your jeans up and file them in a drawer. I find hoodies to be very sloppy when it comes to folding and there are a couple of different ways that you can actually tuck the hood in or use it as a little kangaroo pocket to contain the rest of your sweatshirt. So I'll show you a couple of options for hoodies as well. Start by laying the sweatshirt flat and then tucking the hood on top of the shirt. Then you're going to fold the shirt as you normally would, hiding the hood. This helps to keep things mostly tucked away. But if you notice that your hood is still slipping and sliding around, you can grab the hood and stuff it inside the shirt, thereby creating essentially a crew neck sweatshirt. Then you can go ahead and fold and you won't have to deal with the hood sliding out. You just might forget that it's a hoodie. What I love is that it's super contained and you'll never worry about that hood flying out. This though is my favorite way to do it and it is especially great if you're tossing a hoodie in a backpack or a bag for travel. And what you'll do is you'll keep the hood out altogether and you'll fold the shirt as if it were a crew neck. When you get to the top, you're gonna to do one final roll and then you'll just tuck the hood over top of the package. You'll see it stays right in place and it looks super cute too. I find leggings particularly challenging to fold because they don't stand up nicely. So what I like about this technique is that it creates a little envelope for your leggings. So they're like neat little workout packages. Let me show you. You'll do the same thing by folding that crotch part in to create a straight line. Then you're gonna fold your leggings up about halfway and flip the top over about one third the way down. Then you're gonna lift the top flap of the leggings open and stuff the bottom part of the roll in. It's easy to just fold a sports bra in half or toss it in a drawer and call it a day, but I've got a way that you can kind of elevate your folding routine for your sports bras. There you go, level up sister. Start by folding the straps down and then you wanna get about four folds. This will allow you to file your sports bras. For tank tops or smaller tops, it can be hard to get a consistent fold, meaning that your drawer is gonna look sloppy. So here's a technique that you can try to keep things looking more uniform and consistent. Lay the shirt on its front and fold it just above the base. Then you're gonna fold it back up on top of itself. Now you're gonna do two folds. From the top, you're gonna to do one additional fold down, and then you'll do the same thing you did with the leggings. You're gonna open up and create a little flap and tuck the bulk of the tank top into that little flap. We went on a journey together. I learned some new things about folding and hanging. I broke a sweat, but it was all for a good cause. And my hope is that now, the next time you do laundry, or reorganize your closet or drawers. They look gorgeous and they feel good and you use all the techniques 
and your life is amazing. And that brings me to this week's comment question, which is this. What do you think about ironing? When was the last time you ironed something? Do you take your stuff to the dry cleaners because you don't want to iron anymore? Are you fully into steam zone? Or do you just not care at all? This shirt is like a, an iron only shirt and I loved it so much. I'm just like, I will deal with the wrinkles. They will merge in with the scribbles and it's all good. So you know what? I pull this thing out of the washing machine. I hang it to dry and whatever wrinkles exist, God is with me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if folding really gets your creative juices flowing, we've got a whole folding playlist that you can check out. It's right over here. And if you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe to the Clean My Space channel. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.